warmest greetings. First, I want to give thanks and prayers to the Most High. Give thanks for life. Give thanks for our ancestors for their sacrifice and their commitment. And the reality is that if it weren't for our parents, we wouldn't be here right now. If it weren't for our grandparents, our parents would be here. That's why we must give thanks. Anyway, we have our beautiful sister, Sister P, inside the house, who will be reason with us. Also, I'm um, big up this house of consciousness where once in a while come together and reason and talk about the condition we face as a community and talk about the consciousness. See? So, I want to big up this institute here. And so, let me this thing happen now. Anyway, P, how are you keeping? I'm not too bad. Good to see you, Dougie. You look yeah? very lovely, very oh, thank cheerful. Thank you very much. You know, Glittery gold about you. Oh, you know thank you, thank you. Know, you. Let me hold your hand. You know, good, good to, good, good to go hand. Yeah, you know good to see you again. All yeah. right then. Well, P, I know you do great things about the place. You know, I like to uh, think I do. Yeah, and um, one thing we want to do is let people know flavour. You know about what's happening in the community in Tottenham. You know, and also uh, talk about the old thing about radio. You know, and also touch a little bit on politics because it all ties in together, yeah, as you know. You know, what um, what I want to do is touch your thing about radio because we're doing a lot of talk about radio and stuff, right? And what's your views about your thing about radio, radio stations in general? I think radio um, is something that began many, many moons ago. Mm -hmm. Right, but it survived. It mm. survived the internet. Mm -hmm. It survived the digital era. Mm. I think it's a necessary facility right, or instrument um, that has its, has its roots mm. right, in communication. Mm -hmm. And I think without the radio, a lot of the music and, and the genres that's come, that, right, that we right. enjoy today yeah. came directly out of radio. Mm -hmm. For example, um, Back in the early seventies, there was no um, uh, how can I put it? Uh, okay, there was no facilities there for the music that we enjoy today. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, for example, I can remember that the only reggae station that was around in the or. Oh, or reggae program that was read there was Steve Bernard drum Yeah, when was Steve Bernard? Yeah, he the had, name? Yeah. yeah, he had a little thing called Reggae Time between mm. twelve and one, mm -hmm. and that was on what was it on LBC? Was it, was it? Radio London. Radio, Radio London. London. Okay, yeah, Radio. yeah. And, uh, LBC don't play reggae music. No, no, no. Oh, yes, uh, yeah, that's it. Yeah, yeah. so yeah. Um, I don't listen to radio that much, right? <laughs> but I must admit, mm. right? But LBC, um, what do you call it? A Radio London. Radio London. Right? And I must say, I mean. There was before that there was a guy called was it Steve Bernard? No, he, t -ton, yeah, Tony. Before that, Steve Bernard was around. Steve Bernard. He started off in Luxembourg, didn't he? See Steve Bernard? I think he did start off okay, in Luxembourg. I'm, right? I'm sure. The people um, clarified us that we need some yeah. clarification. And yeah. then there was the Emperor Roscoe. Remember? Okay. He's a, he was the American mm. and he used to have a, um, a, a classic uh, kind of like a jingle. Uh, you say Chad Baby, do you remember that one? Mm -hmm. Chad Baby. This is the Emperor Roscoe. Do you remember okay, it? No, no, yeah, no, no, yeah. no, 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 I think, I think, it's to the, B, the, the, the BBC to try, right? Mm. Because, I mean, there was also another DJ, um, Charlie Gillett. Mm -hmm. He did try with that. Yeah, mm -hmm. he used to have little bits and pieces on there. I remember he had the specials. Okay. Remember the specials? I had the specials, yeah. Yeah, was with um, Jerry Dammers, mm. yeah, and mm. uh, Message to You, Rudy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, he did try to play, I think, but there was, I think he was into world music, wasn't he? Is that so, yeah? Yeah, he was into okay. And John Peel, John Peel, mm -hmm. he, um, <coughs> sorry, he was, he was into that as well. He mm. did try, mm -hmm. but I think when Reggae Time came on, that's the only really uh, time that we, that us is, well, young, well, not be here, so that was only a baby then. <laughs> <laughs> right? <laughs> they could um, enjoy. Uh, being young and hearing different different music from but, um, from outside, yeah. I think Tony Williams, he was one who really. Uh, I think it was was it was it BBC Radio or Capital Radio? Is it, is it, is it, is Radio London. Radio Alex London. Pascal. No, no, Alex Pascal. I'm talking about Tony Williams. Yeah, he came on just before Alex Pascal. I remember. Is that so? Yeah. Okay, because well, no, in terms of the programming. But, but I remember he used to have a show. I think on a Sunday. Yes. Yeah, and everybody's to listen to him on a Sunday, Tony Williams. Yeah. 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 Okay. Called reggae time. Because that's yeah. that's how I identify reggae really too. 
um, Tony Williams, you know. Um, and mm. also, what he used to do, he used to like, because you know they had their own sound systems in those days. Right. So a lot of those sounds that were here, that was underground, mm. we were allowed to hear them. Allowed to hear them. Yeah. Okay. Up, you know, upstairs. Okay. Right? Legally. Well, not legally, but I mean, we went we had to hear. They got better airplay. Okay. Yeah? And um, and and also, well, I think what he tried to do, what Tony Williams was trying to basically bring it all together. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But one did one good thing that he did do, right? And he, he hasn't had credit for this, right? Is he brought in? Uh, well, he didn't bring in, right? But David Rodigan was on his program. Oh, Do you remember? that's when they started working together. They were working in partnership. You know, son. I'm glad yeah. you mentioned that because yeah, I, did, I did, I did, I did, I did mention this um, on on um, here a couple of weeks ago. And I mentioned somewhere else that um, this. No, someone told me this. In fact, Brother Fitzroy told me this, right? He said that. Uh, Tony Williams is the one who kind of groomed Ronnie Gunn. I right. don't know if he groomed him. Well, he kind of brought him in and kind of probably groomed him. But then again, I open up for the discussion, but Tony Williams did, like you, you just mentioned that, that Tony Williams uh, gave Ronnie Gunn some air time, yeah? I don't know if he gave him some air time, but, but he was actually, they worked together. They worked together? Yeah, okay, on, on, all right. Yeah, so I think, right. I'm not qualified to say that he gave yeah, him air time, right. but he did, he did actually work with him right. and got the exposure yeah to yeah working together okay then. yeah otherwise we would never heard of him really yeah, yeah, in the true. beginning yeah yeah but i'd be interested to, yeah, to know, the, know the know the, the um, actual facts of behind that yeah we don't know never. yeah yeah okay then. But, but um what i'm gonna say now in terms of um looking at what's happening on the scene today because things has changed up now remember we're talking about club norik club norik no longer club norik um this is called but for, for, for the benefit of the audience, we need to say where Club Norwich is. Yeah, yeah? Right. Club Norwich is now Apex House. <laughs> okay. Yeah, it was it, it was a, a nightclub. It was a, a cinema mm -hmm. that was there in the fifties. The gentleman that owned it, and uh, it named it after his son. I don't well, know why. It was, it was a cinema. Yeah, it named it after his son, and then back in the seventies, eighties, it became known as. Club Norwich, somebody else bought it. I don't know who owned it, mm -hmm. but a lot of young people, teenagers, used to have their reggae time, they used to have their mm -hmm. between at night time. I think it was usually on a Friday night. Friday night, yeah, Saturday night. Did you used to go to that? Yeah, I used to go Club Norwich, yeah, Fridays, Saturday, and Sundays. Okay. Yeah, it's just open. I know it's open here, yeah, yeah. those night days. We were popular at the time at Club Norwich. And when did that finish? So, what time? What, no, when did the Club Norwich shut down? Oh, I can't remember. It must have been in the. I'd imagine in the 80s, probably early 80s. That's what I was thinking because the, because the young ones used to go to Club Norwich. Mm -hmm. uh, well, that was a buzz place. And the next buzz place, right, was the Tottenham Royal. Yeah, Tottenham Royal. A lot of young people used yeah. to go there. And I think our parents' generation used to go to Shady, Shady Grove. Grove. Shady Grove. Okay. Yeah, do you remember that? Yeah, I remember Shady Grove. Yeah. Grove. The benefit of the audience, where was Shady Grove? Who's Grove? Bruce Grove. Bruce Grove. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. So we, so uh, a lot of our parents used to go there, and then later on, other clubs began to spring up, mm -hmm. like All Nations. Mm -hmm. Where they they used to play more ragga there, didn't they? Mm -hmm. Well, they have three down floor: ragga, soul, yeah. soul, and lovers, and you know, yeah. Yeah. But Shady Grove is the place to be, you know, in, the, in definitely from the seventies, eighties, yeah. Yeah, but didn't they have a lot of private parties there as well? You could, you could. Uh, um, hire the place and have a party, and make money. Um, Not that used to go on there, isn't it? I don't know because then I was quite young at the time, so I wouldn't yeah, know the mechanics too. of all, me all these things. Are really, but are. there was a but there was a time when there was a lot of in the black community, a lot of house parties. Oh yes, Remember? yes, yes, yes. Of course, people of course, of course. To, people used to use their houses. <laughs> so you used so, so, so tell me, so you used to go to um, these house parties yourself. House parties. Yeah. I'm too young for that. I told you. I was, I'm only I'm only sixteen, you know. <laughs> <laughs> right. So no no I'm only, I mean, I'm only uh, mere baby. How would I know about anything like that? Okay. No, 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 because you mentioned it, so I just thought you might have um uh, mentioned these um these house parties. So um in terms of the record shops. I know a lot of people that had house parties. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I used to, I used to hear the, the talk how mm -hmm. it used to go. Mm -hmm. Right. I know this gentleman he he when he had moved into his flat, right? 
He said he kept nine house parties. <laughs> kept nine house parties. And he flat. finished out his whole house. <laughs> yeah. Oh, with the money he made from the yeah. house parties. <laughs> so the money making concern. He's but it wasn't, so, it wasn't so easy on the neighbours, right? Because in those days, right, you had people who had young children and, and you had these the music jumping well, down the place, right? So it wasn't easy because in those days. I don't think... Um, Health and safety regulations were so stringent. Yeah, yeah. yeah and then the, the licensing laws. Yeah. Yeah. You know, what's it, what's the type? So, um, to come back to the old thing, you know, just the old thing about, um, you know, the, the music and the old thing about the radio and the club and, you know, but the record shops, you know, what can you say about the record shops? Because it all ties it together. Uh, the record shop was was the trumpet for what people wanted mm. right, out there. Um, the record shops. When I was, when I discovered, but how I discovered, I, mean, I was brought up in an area mm -hmm. right, where you didn't have many of people that looked like us. Mm -hmm. Does that make any sense? Right, yeah? right. So therefore, I only heard reggae music like through the charts. Through the charts. Okay. Yeah. And when you used to, when they used to go to go and get the records, they used to say, "I'm sorry, we don't have it, mm. right?" Cause it, because they, they said, they, I said, "Why don't you have it?" They said, "It's a, dem a demand for it, mm -hmm. right?" But the more people started like going and asking questions, right, about what, you know, not asking questions, but asking for the records, they used to get these. They started mm. ordering it. Mm -hmm. And there's one place they used to go, like North Holland Park, and he said, he said to me, the guy said to me that. Um, he hasn't really got the connection to get it on a on a big scale. That's mm. why they don't get it. But mm. what he, but what he said he could get, he would get, mm -hmm. and it always used to get it for him. Take up to two weeks. Okay. I then. remember I got the first one. The first song I think I bought was um, "Uptown Top Ranking," mm. Alfie and Donna. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and he he kind of like you know he, he was always good. He always got it for me whenever whenever I wanted. But mm. I think it was the demand. Mm. Yeah, at, at the time, and I suppose they didn't have the connections to. Mm. to go and get it right yeah? right right so right. i think as you know as, as um <coughs> sorry the music became more known right mm -hmm. i think they started to reach out and get more mm -hmm. yeah okay then um i remember when we had a conversation yeah, you mentioned um it's a workshop in um stanford stanford Hill. was that rita rita and benny rita and i benny. forgot their name they were a jewish couple right? okay then and they they a lot of the because the they've been around for quite a long time um, yeah as, Stanford Hill. I can't remember them, Stanford Hill. That's the guy there by records or that yeah. once again, that's before my time. Right? Yeah. I only heard of them. What I understand is that they used to help out a lot of the a lot of the stuff that we used to listen to, like in you know, um, in the in the reggae charts, right? Mm. They 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 used to be the, the people that used to do it, you know, um produced music. They were like oh, they were produced music? Yeah. Okay, I yeah. Know that. Well whatever they when they put the music together, what do you call that? What's that term? Yeah, produce, produce, yeah, producing. Yeah, producing. Yeah. Well, they used to do that mm -hmm. for a lot of, you know. So they, they were an early kind of promoter. And, okay, they were allowed to promote as well, yeah. Yeah. Okay, they're sort of quite influencing the whole uh, reggae industry, so to speak. They, the, they, um, they saw, the they saw an opportunity, Auditive, I suppose, yeah. and then and they, they, they decided to take a risk and it okay. paid off. You know? Okay. Then. It's just like Chris Blackwell with, with him. It's the same thing, like that he. He actually um, uh, financed Billy, uh, not financed, so oh, I'm talking Mar about. Mar he actually um, supported her. Who's that? Uh, Chris Blackwell. Supported who? Millie. Millie. Oh, Millie. Oh, Millie. okay. Then. Yeah, and also he also, I think his biggest breakthrough was Bob Marley. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. 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 You know, so um, that, that, that you know, he believed in her and she, yeah. she went to number one with my Lollipop in 1966. 1966? I think, 68. I guess, yeah. but it was in the sixties. Yeah, yeah. I yeah. don't know what year it is. You know, but, yeah. But um, I meant wow. to support her um, profession. Mm -hmm. I mean, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. That's but amazing. I mean, That's but amazing. see, so I think because because like, when she was small, mm -hmm. there wouldn't be a great demand for mm -hmm. reggae music. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, well, I don't know. I don't know how true that is. You know, it would have been a demand for reggae music because not what, not wide scale, not that time. So again, I'm not too sure about that because I mean. Don't forget, quite a lot of our people are here, and obviously in the 60s, I'm, you know, if I misrepresent information here, I do stand to be corrected. You know, I have a cameraman who knows everything about music, so after him can correct me and say, boy, doggy, I chat with rubbish, so please correct me after. But don't forget, there, there was a lot of our people here, right? Right? And reggae was getting quite, don't forget, a lot of people used to get reggae music from 
from Jamaica. People came out of Jamaica buying music from Jamaica, bring music in and everything. Right? So yeah. there was a demand here, right? Just that but I. It, it, but it wasn't coming here. It, that's right. Know, that's um, right. But I feel that they deliberately, right, kind of sabotaged it because they didn't want reggae music to be pushed at all. Do you think so? I, I, but it's my person. Uh, that's my person. That's my personal opinion. Well, maybe you know, the because time there was, there was. Maybe, I, maybe it wasn't the right time for it to come through. Everything, everything has its own time. Well, that's open for debates. You know what I mean? So you know, probably after this, we'll have another discussion about that. Do you know what I mean? Actually, when, actually, when my dad came up from Jamaica, he, I remember he listening to that song called "Take Him." Mm. That song. But is it? Is it um, Cobra? Take Him. Okay. Yeah. So yeah, and that that wasn't really um, here then. Okay. Because don't forget, right? It's only because of this sound system, right? Why, if we're for them, you know, we'll be starved from 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 reggae music. And to me, I so feel it was a funnel. I feel that there was a demand, but I feel the powers to be they didn't want reggae music to get bigger and you know, and you know, because it's just well, it's a lot of politics. I, I think, do you know what I think? I think it was it was everything has its time, mm -hmm. and I think. During the 1970s, when we had a lot of depression mm -hmm. and a lot of recession, mm -hmm. right, which I, which is one of the same thing, a lot of people weren't working, mm -hmm. and they could, I suppose, they could relate to people uh, like Bob Marley talking about freedom, and mm -hmm. you know, because um, unemployment was rife, mm -hmm. everybody wanted to get out of the mm -hmm. out, out of the system, mm -hmm. yeah. So I suppose that was the right time for it to come through. That's when it started late. With you be forty late. Late to eighties, yeah, you're right, and it continued through, yeah, 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 up until well, they're, and they're, they're still the strongest reggae British reggae group, right, in this country, more or less. Yeah, but again, I think a lot of politics why they're the biggest as well. You saw what saying. What the politics was on that? No, because I mean, because it's coming, it's a white group as well. So, yeah, they're right? good. So, no, 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 no but they also they also had a good reggae groups around as well. And the question is now, so why is it they never got the um, the opportunity, the airplay, and so forth, you know. Chachi. So, so there is a whole scenario <coughs> um, around that, you know. Shall I tell you what? How they got through, right? Ali Campbell, right, is a brilliant singer. You have, you have to give him that. Yeah? Mm -hmm. He's a fantastic singer, right? Also, they, 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 they got a good business head, mm -hmm. right? And they got their own label, mm -hmm. yeah. And I think they kept reinvesting and reinvesting mm -hmm. in as they went along, mm -hmm. and the business, the business just grew. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So I think maybe it's the way they handled their business, mm -hmm. which made them sustain. Because I mean, look at all the other groups that are around in them days. Because that, because when they first started, they, they were right at the bottom. Mm -hmm. right? It was it was Selector, it was this, it was that, uh, it was the Beat, mm -hmm. right? And then all of a sudden, all those groups dropped off, and they carried on. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So it's the, I suppose it's the way they manage themselves and the way they promote to themselves but like as said, well. So yeah, but I think there is this, this bit more to it as well, but we don't really understand, you know. But um, what I want to do here, I just want to jump forward a little bit more because um, I want to talk a little bit about um, our um, the Labour J Jeremy. Uh, Jeremy Corbyn. Yeah, because we've got oh, two minutes that, left. That's, that is just going on and on and on. And on. Yeah. You know, about Jeremy, 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 non stop. He's a good man. He's a good yeah, man. He's a good man, right? I think the papers are giving him unnecessary grief. Okay. Right? And like he said in his in, in his speech when he got in, right? Everyone should respect, yeah. you know what I'm talking about, pe pe other people's privacy, right? Right, right? It's not for us. And I think that the, the media sometimes go too far and get, go, get into things they don't understand, they don't know about, and they run with the hounds, right? Okay. It's unnecessary. Okay. Well, listen, we're going to bring this to a close of it. This is a very stimulating uh, reasoning. So I want to bring this to the end. So again, give thanks. The house of consciousness, this is the place to be. Give thanks. Peace. Thank you. <laughs>